Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So we have been doing our craft closet declutter and I wanted to give you the tour and update and uh, tell you where we're going now because I am all in on this whole declutter thing. I am going to declutter this entire house and uh, let's see, we're right now we're three days after Christmas and uh, I told you about the uh, holiday things that we have that I never put away even from Halloween. Uh, and so I want you to join me on this whole declutter journey. And I've been thinking a lot about it uh, earlier uh, this fall. Our whole family decluttered our food. And now I'm and it kind of inspired me to declutter my house and I'm going to declutter my finances and my time. And that's my goal this next year. And I hope you'll jo join me on that. So let's open the doors and get the tour. So uh, I don't know if you remember what it was like before, but this closet was so packed that there were literally things falling out. And I, it was packed so full, uh, I at times couldn't close the door. I had to kind of shove things in to even get the doors closed. So now let's take a look at the declutter. And so up here on the top shelf, I have a bin with a project that I'm in the middle of working on. And that's where it's just uh, living. It's easy for me to get down and put back up. It's not heavy. If it was heavy, I wouldn't have it on the top shelf. But that shelf was full of uh, quilts and I don't know, just stuff I didn't even know was there. And so that shelf, only thing there. And the declutter that I was doing in this closet was 15 minute declutter sections, real time, no editing. And so you saw it as it really was. So if you haven't seen those, be sure to uh, go back and look for those on my channel. This, this shelf, completely clear. I don't even remember what was on that shelf. The things that are gone that I sent to Goodwill, I sent a huge carload of things to Goodwill from this closet only. And I don't even hardly remember what was in all of that. That's how insignificant it was to me. And so this shelf clear, this shelf, I've, uh, you saw me talk through some very sentimental quilts. These are the ones I'm saving. I still have a project to do to move my pins from my pin quilt onto my dad's tie quilt. And so that's there waiting for me, reminding me. And then my laminator that I use often that I had such a hard time even accessing because it was packed with so many things around it. I have my uh, spiral binder machine that I use frequently. It was lost somewhere else in the house. I actually found that and was able to find a place for all my spiral binding and notebooks and my long arm uh, stapler, which is one of my favorite tools. And so that all fits nicely there. I've got my spirals here and the little tool to crimp the spirals. So that, perfect, easy to reach, easy to put away. And that's one of the things I've been learning that when you declutter and organize, it's really important that things are just as easy to put away as they are to leave out. And uh, it's not easy anymore to leave it out because it starts to create clutter around it. So super easy to put away. And then down here on this shelf, this what this is the light box my dad made. I'm saving that for a project and then I'm actually going to let that go because I have wonderful things that my dad made that that remind me of him that make me happy, but I'm not needing this large light box anymore. I'm saving it to go through some slides and negatives, and then I'm going to let that go. And we have all the shirts from, um, from Ann's uh, 5K, uh, because we run as a family team and we do this every year. So last year or this this past August, you saw me make our team t-shirts on my channel. And so I'm just going to keep those there. I did get an idea from a viewer and I want you to know how much I appreciate your comments. So what I'm going to do, what, what someone suggested was go ahead and hang these shirts in that space. And so I'm going to do it. And so one of the other things I did is I went through my closet 
And uh, I have hangers that I don't like. They're just, I don't know, for some reason, certain hangers bug me. And so I went ahead and pulled out all the hangers that bug me. And uh, so those are ones that I'm going to use to hang our team t-shirts. So I'm just going to get all of those hung. And that way are they're easy to find. They're neat and tidy. And uh, we can just grab them next to August and have our team t-shirts ready. This makes it so that we still have, I'll just slide them to the end there. And, th and then we also have space still for guests, and I'm gonna have a, a couple of extra hangers there. Because if you've been with my channel or watched my craft room tours, you know that uh, this room also has to be a guest room, not just a craft room. And so that side, I cannot even tell you the relief that I feel having that, that clean. So let's look at the other side. So starting again from the top, we, I've got that project up there. And then this next shelf down, I have this set that is a, a Logan cutter and it's got a whole bunch of accessories that came with it. We used to use that a lot. And uh, we like to do a lot of projects with cardboard and miniatures and things, but we never used it because it was packed in and to get anything out, stuff would fall out with it. And there were things behind, there were things in front, and it just drove me crazy. So what I love now is there it is. That's all there is on that shelf is the cutter and the accessories. So I can easily grab it out, move it to our big table in the family room, and cut our cardboard. I also use it for cutting chipboard and other things. So that's a real handy thing to have. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to evaluate and see how often we use it. And uh, we may not actually use it as much as we used to. We might have moved into a different phase where we are not using that very much. So I'm going to evaluate, and if that is something that we no longer really use much of, then I'm going to consider putting that on Facebook Marketplace and, and we'll go from there. But for right now, it's accessible so I know whether we're going to use it or not. I can see whether we will. So at least we can reach it and things won't fall out on our heads, which has happened. And in, in fact, if you were watching my 15 minute declutter, you saw at one time that some things actually fell out onto my head. So it's safer to declutter. Okay, let's look down at this next shelf. So this is, this is the shelf where I keep, uh, where I now store my husband's uh, stained glass materials. So he likes to do stained glass and it's kind of a new thing that he uh, started doing a couple of years ago. He's always really loved stained glass when we would travel, uh, go places. He loves cathedrals and looking at the glass and those kinds of things. And so he decided he wanted to try it and we all really encouraged that because so much of what is important about crafting is the process and I this really is something I'm kind of passionate about remembering is that the end product is no more important than the process for getting there and so that also is is something to keep in mind to remind us why we don't have to save every little thing because it was the process that mattered my daughter Anne, she has down syndrome she is a great example of this for me because she loves sticker puzzles where you get uh, little stickers and there's a picture and you put them in their little spot and she will do those over and over she'll she'll buy the little book and redo the same puzzle over and over and over and when she's done it's not like she looks through it and goes wow look at what i've done she'll come and show me and i ooh and ah over her finished little book and then she'll say okay i don't need that anymore and she throws it away but that has taught me such a great lesson a lot of this is the process and what you learn and the what you're thinking as you do this. It's 
that matters so much. And it isn't always just the end product. And so as my husband is learning to do his stained glass, he makes some things that are kind of wonky. I think they're beautiful, but we don't save every little thing in that process, but he enjoys doing it. So here we have his tools and his bin, all of the things he needs to do his stained glass. Uh, it, when this closet was full, this was here, this was, this was out in the family room, this was under a table, and now here it all is in one place on one shelf, and he can easily get to it. And if he's using it, of course, he'll move it on to the big table in the family room, which we keep clear. That's one of the rules. Okay, and then the only other thing on this shelf... Oh, look, I can see this is not the place for this because it's a little too hard to get out. So on this shelf is our bin of Sculpey clay and all the tools that go with it because it is something we enjoy. We used to have a bigger box of this. We had stuff scattered everywhere. And so now this is our space and we don't exceed that space. That's all the space we have for Sculpey clay tools. And so that's how we're going to keep it. And I think I'm going to just move this up to the shelf just so that it's an easier in and out because I want it to be easy to put away and easy to get out. This shelf was full of boxes, memory. It, it was crammed full. And so I went ahead and sorted the boxes based on each of the kids. Now, this is the one area down below that I have not tackled and I need to give myself some space, some time before I tackle this. So I took everything that was up on this shelf, boxes of photos and things. I looked at it, decided where it belonged, which of the kids uh, that box belonged to. And then I put it with each of the kids' big memory box. So this whole section down, yes, it is still crowded. But now I know. All memory stuff is there. And when I am in a better place to tackle this, then I will. And so this shelf, now I have just a couple of things that I need to make some decisions about. I need to do some research on because these things are... Um, there, I've got some photo negatives from back in the day when you took pictures and you ended up with a negative. I've got... Uh, a book of my grandmother's writings that I told you about in the declutter. So these are things I need to do a little bit of research before I can settle that. And then this is a project of for Anne and with Anne that I'm working on. And so that shelf is now no longer packed. I had stuff packed back in here that that would fall out. I had so many wood blanks, it was shocking. So you can go back and look at that video. But this feels so much better. Now, just this uh, a comment about these memory things down below. That is going to be the hardest thing to declutter in my home. I already know that that's going to be the case. And so I don't want to let that stop me from decluttering the rest of my house. So I'm okay for a time with this to be just packed in like that. It's safe, it's okay, and I can leave it like that for now because if I try to tackle that, so I can say, oh, I did the whole closet. If I try to tackle that, that's, I'm afraid, going to take me weeks and weeks and weeks, and I want to free up the rest of the house. I want to have breathing room. I want to have freedom of space, of energy, of time. And I want to spend less time dealing with inventory in my house. And so I am choosing to put off that declutter of those boxes until I can breathe a little better in my own home. And it's hard for me to show you the amount of clutter we have because I I tend to be sort of a naturally tidy person, but I am completely overwhelmed with clutter. And so I hope you enjoyed that tour of my now organized, cleared out cupboard. I know exactly what's here. Nothing 
is has gone missing. Oh, just a little update. I showed you this little tiny uh, jumping man from Leavenworth that, that we had bought for my son that's broken. And so I wrapped it up and gave it to my son for Christmas in his stocking. And he loved it. And he opened it. And we talked about the memories and how fun that was. And then he let it go. And so we were able to, it was broken. We were able to uh, actually throw that away, but we relived some of those happy memories. And so that was very cool. So when you clear out your closet, this was a craft closet, but there was so much more in it than crafting. And it was very good for me to go through and say, I can let this go. And now this closet doesn't embarrass me. I mean, this is a guest room and I've been so embarrassed about this closet. It doesn't embarrass me anymore. I know where things are. And now my closet serves me well. And so I'm, in, I'm going to invite you to find just one space, set up that 15 minutes a day, and uh, some days the 15 minutes were, came to the end and I wanted to keep going. Other days it was just a relief because I felt like there were too many things that I'd had to make decisions about and I kind of hit this place of decision fatigue. And so it was a relief for those 15 minutes to end. After this video, I am going to take you into the family room and show you the disaster of the bins that I have for Christmas, Hanukkah, and uh, Halloween that I never cleaned up. And I'm going to go throughout the house. I am going to find every little tiny Christmas item I have and put it with Christmas, every Hanukkah item, every Halloween item. And then you are going to see what I'm doing and how I'm weeding those out now because my storage room is ridiculously cluttered and full. And so I'm starting with those bins because they're out in my family room driving me crazy. And so we will go through that together. And so I hope you, you enjoyed our closet tour. I hope you'll subscribe and join me. This is, uh, I can foresee this is going to be a very interesting year as I declutter my home, my food, my finances, and my time. And so uh, we'll see you next time.